Welcome to Peak TV. I'm Niv Dagan, Executive Director of Peak Asset Management, and we're fortunate to have Frank Poulos, Chairman of Magnus Energy. Frank, great to see you. Hi, Niv. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Frank, Magnus, we're a big supporter. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Niv. Uh, so, Magnus is a uh, lithium-ion battery materials um, supplier, uh, but we also uh, have interest in lithium-ion um, cell manufacturing plants. So we're actually um, looking at making lithium-ion batteries, uh, not just supplying those raw materials as well, sort of sort of an end-to-end -end player in the space. Fantastic. And, and, and Frank, the, the, the graphite opportunity, before we talk about how big the lithium market is, the fact that you become, you're going to become the second largest gigawatt factor in the US. I just want to touch on the graphite opportunity because I think that's misled a little bit by the market. But do you want to elaborate how big that opportunity can actually become? Uh, from a profitability point of view, Niv, it's, it would be huge for Magnus. And we believe that, you know, we're working hard towards getting financing for this project. It is a unique project in the way that we're able to produce a battery grade anode material uh, which doesn't need any chemical or thermal purification, which is something unique in the marketplace. So, you know, what we expected to be the lowest cost and, you know, the, the greenest product in the marketplace. So that all bodes well. Uh, if I sort of went back 12 to 18 months, there wasn't much interest there for the um, project or for the product as there was probably four or five years ago, but that has completely changed. And I think you're seeing that, uh, with a lot of our peers in the marketplace and their market caps increasing or uh, dual generation in the space as well. We know we have something that is high quality, really unique, uh, and we're you know looking forward to bringing the project into production um, as soon as we can. And we are speaking with groups regarding um, both offtake and financing in the background. Well, that's fantastic hearing that there's some offtakes potentially on the cards. Now, I did want to touch on the lithium uh, opportunity because this is what's really exciting. Uh, you've recently received $110 million of funding, uh, some equity, some debt, backed by Riverstone, which is a really well-respected private, private equity uh, group. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about who they are and what the achievement, what, what that actually means for the company? Yeah. So, so, so Riverstone themselves are a private equity group and they uh, provide financing or uh, make investments in the energy space. Uh, traditionally, it was more around, you know, the oil um, and gas space, and it's now turning towards uh, renewables. Uh, it, what does it mean for us? Well, we're actually fully funded to get into production now. So our plant, which we recently announced earlier this week, uh, which will be able to produce 1.8 gigawatt hours of annual uh, production and, and it has that capacity, uh, it would make it one of the top plants in the US. There is, you know, as you know, Niv, there's a lot of activity in the space. Uh, there are a lot of plants um, upscaling or coming into production. And, uh, you know, we'll probably talk later on about our aggressive plans to scale up as well. Uh, but in short, you know, we will be in production um, in, you know, 2022 and will be one of the you know, top producers of lithium ion batteries uh, in the US. Now, Frank, I want to touch base on just the recent announcement that you made, 650 million US dollars as a minimum of binding uh, offtakes. Um, that is a, an, an enormous achievement for a company of 250 million market cap. Just want to talk a little bit, is that one year, two years, three years? I mean, what are the contracts? You know, tell the, the, you know, those at home that are, that are viewing this, I mean, what does a contract look like? Who potentially are the customers? You know, and 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 that's a minimum, um, and that's binding. I mean, obviously, I suspect that a lot is unbinding, and and there's a lot in the pipeline. So, do you just want to elaborate a little bit more about that recent announcement? Yeah, Niv. So, in regards to the the length of those contracts, uh, they're predominantly between two and five years, uh, and I'd say probably on an average they'd be like you know somewhere around the four year mark. Uh, as you mentioned, that's a minimum. Um, uh, with some of these contracts, they've got a you know a binding element. Um, they, they've got sort of the overall uh, quantities they require, and then of that, a percentage of that is binding, which is what we counted. We haven't counted you know the whole amount um, that they're looking at purchasing. 
Regarding uh, the, the customers, uh, the majority of them are in the energy stationary storage side. Uh, so looking at, you know, grid applications, uh, uh, you know, buildings, homes, um, so batteries for these types of applications. Uh, we have um, some in the transportation space as well, and I can't really get too much into um, the names, but ones that we have announced in the marketplace previously, uh, a group called Martech. So Martech produces unmanned boats uh, and vehicles, mainly for uh, government purposes and sort of surveillance purposes. Uh, and we are working with um, BAE Systems as um, you're probably aware with the, the whole fast charging space as well. So there are sort of a couple of names that we've spoken about that we've provided batteries to, whether it's for various programs or for um, their applications now as well. Uh, but regarding the others, uh, it, it, it's sort of tight lip for the time being. Uh, I think what you'll, and you'll find is once we are in production, uh, then um, companies will allow that name to come out at that period in time. Uh, but you got to remember, we're in a space where the market is very tight. Uh, we, uh, we've even been looking at for some sort of projects internally to buy some sales in the marketplace. And there's like a four to five month lead time. So you can imagine you're an end user that signed a contract with us. Um, last thing you want to be doing is putting your name out there and saying, you know, we're, we're purchasing batteries off these guys because you never know the current supply might turn around and say, look, you know, we've got all these other groups who want sales right now and they might sort of come down the pecking order. But, you know, we're, we're, we're months away um, from the um, from production and, you know, I think that will all change once we're in production. Yeah, I know we spoke about last night um, just in terms of the, the the market and the perception and also, you know, the gross margins, et cetera. I mean, do you have any aspirations as well to potentially put together an analyst research node, just clarifying that sort of on the breakdowns? Look, we are speaking to a couple of brokers at the moment um, and it, it would be great to put some numbers out there. There are also sort of sensitivities in the space um, regarding, you know, margins, but, you know, we know... Uh, you know, if we're talking about, you know, listing um, in the US and we're a listed entity as well, uh, you know, at some point we will need to provide um, uh, further information regarding margins and so on. And, you know, we look forward to doing that as well. Uh, and we just sort of need, you know, greater certainty in regards to production timelines and so on before we can sort of start uh, pr producing some of these numbers in the marketplace. Before we talk about the, the long-term aspirations and what the company looks like, I think it's pretty incredible, as I said, for, for a company of 250 million market cap, getting $110 million of funding, receiving already $650 million of binding contracts, as and obviously doesn't include the non-binding part, with multi-year contracts and, and, and real blue chip customers. I mean, that, that's a credit to you, Frank, so well done to you and, and obviously the board. Um, on, on that point, I mean, what is the aspirations? We've moved from one gigawatt to 1.8 um, 32 is is the number that you've you've brought to the market. I mean, what 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 are the long term plans for the company? And from a scalability perspective, what does that look like? Yeah, so so we realise we're in a market that is sort of you know in its early stages. Uh, there are you know number and you know t tens and tens of new players trying to get into this space. The beauty about what we have is we will be in production, you know, within 12 months in the world's largest economy. And we've got a president who is sort of pro green energy and renewables and is putting tens of billions into uh, expanding uh, cell manufacturing in the country. Uh, being one of the major players in the space have, and being in production, uh, we're quite excited about some of these policies that um, he's putting in. Uh, as you're probably aware, one of our uh, directors that has recently come on the board of Magnus, um, Mona, uh, is an advisor to his administration as well. So we feel like we're in a good space there. The plan is to grow exponentially quickly. And we think that will happen um, via a listing in the U.S., so we're talking about listing the US entity, not Magnus itself. Uh, so we're just investigating that at the moment. Um, 
uh, but with the expertise that Mona brings to the board, uh, we think we can sort of move on that quickly. And, you know, we look forward to um, updating the market once we have something in concrete regarding that. But the plan, yeah, Niv, is to grow as quick as possible. Uh, we're looking at, you know, as soon as we get into first production, um, concurrently uh, m moving towards sort of that five gigawatt hour mark, which our factory can house. Um, and then looking at plans going towards that 32 gigawatt hour mark. Uh, we realise we're in the space uh, at the right time. We're there early and we've got to take advantage of it. We can't just sit around and, you know, bank on, you know, being up and running at 1.8 gigawatt hours. We want to grow and be a major player. And we think by um, being listed in the US market, one, I think uh, we, we'll probably get, you know, a valuation uh, for the entity in New York, that's probably well deserved. Uh, we see some of our peers in the marketplace who you know, don't have uh, any revenues or commercialized technology, and you know there's no plans to uh, be in production for you know at least four to five years with you know market caps above ten billion dollars, and we see our uh, operation being production in 12, within twelve months with commercialized technology with off takes. Uh, we believe we're grossly undervalued for, uh, from our side of things, comparing us to peers in the marketplace. And we think by listing um, and having that entity listed overseas, one, it helps the growth plans, uh, but also hopefully gives us that, you know, valuation that we believe um, would be fair versus, you know, what we're seeing our peers in the marketplace being worth. Frank, we're big supporters, as you'd know. Love your work. As I said, thanks very much for joining us for Peak TV and uh, keep up the great momentum. Thanks, Steve. Really appreciate your support. Thanks a lot.